Welcome back to The Real Country File. Harvest has begun on our farm. This is a field that was sandy ground on the banks of the river. We combined it last Monday. We drilled it again on Tuesday with spring barley. Let's show you. So if you look there, you can see some spring barley coming up. Little shoots. So that is up in five days. We are hoping that we can harvest it as a commercial crop end of September, maybe into October. Let's we'll see if we can get two crops out of one harvest. Some of you might have seen this already on my YouTube channel. Anyway, coming up this week, Anders is looking at some goat farming for meat. It's a bit of a mouthful, that. And Stephen looks at the rest of David's tractor collection. And I look around Hunt fa Carrot Factory. Here it is. <laughs> We've come up top end now. And uh, uh, it's fair to say you've um, you've a fair collection amongst you, haven't you? Is there any that you can say is your favourite particularly? Well, I'll have to say Mother's Tractor over there. Mother's Tractor? Yeah, we don't sell that, you'd be down. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? Standing tall here then, David. This is a, a very different looking... It came mine. off a friend of mine, Doug Taylor, and it, was, it came from Holland, and these mud guards but I saw it didn't damage the flowers going through. There's mud guards back and front. So it's to drive over top at flowers. Yeah. While harvesting or weeding and yeah. spraying. Another rare beast. It is. You seem to have a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> And then what looks like cabs under restoration on this 885, no, is that? No, no. It came like that, so it'd be staying like that. Patina. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's certainly shed number one. And that's another one. Oh, what have we got? Oh, we haven't finished. What's this? No, is? this is a vineyard. That's where the exhaust underneath an orchard tractor. Um, that came with, from Doug Taylor with that big David Brown. Um, it's an eight, quite rare that, it's an 885, narrow, vineyard, orchard, whatever. Hey David, it looks like we've got to workshop end at, at Shed here and it's very orange. What's this, uh, what's this particular fella here? That, uh, I've never heard it wrong, it's supposed to have an um, injection pump fault. Um, it's a Steyr, made in Austria. But I'm going to take it to the show just as it is and, um, you know, just as an exhibit, not a runner. Different kind of tractor, and then? This, uh, I bought off a friend of mine just before he died, Dick Lancaster. Um, it was new in 1937, to a farm that my dad once rented. My dad didn't have the farm then, but that's where it went, 1937. So, I said I'd never sell it, and I won't. And start? He'll start and run, yeah. Another good one, another good one. And Looks like workshop could do with a bit of a tidy corner. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just a bit of tidy. Yeah, if it's tidy, there's nothing going on. No. <laughs> this is an electric tractor. This is. Yeah, you plug it into the mains, and it's for showing out people how they work. You can see the gears and everything in the engine and in the back end. All oh, right. So, so it's the a... university in Aberdeen. So you can see all the. All the gubbins in it. So what have we got then on this top end, David? What have we got up here? That's a nice Nuffield Universal 4. That's a nice tractor. What power are we looking at there? About 56, so nearly 60, I think. Right. And then some at Green for John Deere fans here. 1040. 1040. 1040 John Deere. That's a nice tractor. I bought that just as it is, restored. Looks mint. From Ingleton, that came. Next to a bit of red and... Yeah, that's a nice tractor, 434 International. That came uh, only about six weeks ago. Uh, Alice Chalmers AD40, they, were, they weren't very popular, and it's a, the last tractor in, uh, Alice made in, in, in Great Britain, those, that model. Next to uh, David Brown 950. David Brown 950. Uh, that came out of Harrogate sale about uh, a year ago. And then an 880. An 880. I can't remember where that came from. Is it fair to say you have a thing about David Browns? It seems to be more well, David well, Browns than... They're cheaper than anything red or blue. Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> so you're a frugal man. You're a frugal man. 
That's a lovely 990. Yeah, that looks clean as a whistle. Yeah. And then another odd looking thing That's here. That's a Steyr made in Austria, single cylinder air cool. That is a rare beast, isn't it? That? Yeah, it is. We haven't even started up back row. Sorry? We haven't started up back row no, yet. No, another shed yet. There's another shed yet, right. So 770. Yeah, they're a good little tractor. They're quite valuable, those. And then, what's this fella? That's a, a pony uh, made by Farmall. International, basically. Made in France, though. So. When it starts, you can't see anything for about five minutes and then it clears. Smoke? Yeah. On the Smoke gets in your eyes. And then a, a pink no field. That was done for breast cancer charity. And I had it and then I sold it and I wish I hadn't sold it. And then a, a few weeks ago a fella that had it said, would you like to buy your, your pink no field back? So it's back here. You jumped at chance. Yeah, Sato, made in Japan to copy a David Brown made for David Brown dealers in Australia, South Africa and America where they didn't have a small tractor, the David Brown dealers. So they made that for them, but they never came here. We imported that from Japan. So another, another David Brown from your mate Doug, is that right? Yeah. And uh, what's special about this one then? It came from a raspberry farm in Fife, that's why it's tall. All right. So it's a Scottish Raspberry Farm edition. Yeah. Never seen out quite like it, to be fair. Never seen out quite like it. That's quite a rare tractor, isn't it? 844 International. What makes that rare? Just not many of them, or did they not no, make them? They didn't make them no, they It was an export model. I think it's been to Sweden, that, and come back. It's done a lap or two. Well, we're about uh, eight foot off ground in cab on this. What's, yeah. uh, what's the story with this one? It came, came from America originally. Yeah. And I bought it of a chap in Kent. He said, would I, would I buy it? He said, because uh, if I didn't buy it, the wife was leaving. He said it was outside her, her uh, kitchen window and she was fed up with it. And he said, uh, divorces are expensive. So would you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> And you're working on this at minute? Yeah, it's ready to go, yeah. It was only me driving it though, because the young lads go around the corner too fast with this thing. Just a bit. It'll be happers, won't it? A bit worrying, <laughs> a bit worrying. And then a bit more green. Yeah, 1120 John Deere. Well, my, my father-in-law um, had one of those, and, and children get saying, you've got David Brown, what Granny had, but you you never had anything that Grandad had on the mother's side, so I saw that, so it's 11.20, so. Well, David, thanks for showing us around your uh, very unique uh, collection. It's been a pleasure. I can't believe it's taken over 10 years I've known you, and I've never, I've never met it here. You're busy and I'm busy, but uh, a truly unique collection. Thank you very much, pal. Thank you for coming. Pleasure's all mine. So I'm stood on a beautiful day in a field of grass on the Cheshire Plain, but the thing I'm here to see is actually in a shed right in front of me. So I'm now here with Tim Dobson uh, from Chestnut Meats, and we're in the, the goat shed, which you can see a number of uh, very attractive goats here. So, uh, so Tim, just give us an overview of this site and, uh, and what's going on here. So this is the very start of the process. Um, we go out and we buy goats from 20, 25 farms around the country, um, some of them quite big, some of them quite small. Um, and what we have at the moment is about a month's worth of supply in front of us. Um, there's a lot of male kid goats that are surplus to the dairy pr production cycle um, that we take in. We've got some breeding bill billies, we've got some nanny goats here. Um, somewhere around here there's some angoras that we like very much that won't get slaughtered at all. Um, and, and one or two kids. Um, and every different sort of goat has a different market. Um, some groups will only eat male goats. 
some prefer females, um, some prefer kids, some prefer adult goats. Um, not all goat meat is butchered as you and I would traditionally look to butcher beef or lamb. A lot of it is butchered on the bone, um, direct for customers. Um, for instance, if, we, if we're selling goat meat to people who are originally from northern Africa, they like, like it in quite small pieces. And as the further you move down towards southern Africa, they like the meat in big pieces. Um, so if ever you've tried to sell meat, goat meat in small pieces to people from Nigeria, you end up in terrible, terrible trouble. Um, some groups will only want the male goats. Um, and it's fascinating. Every society is different. And every society stood there and welcomed us in and said, this is what we do, this is how we work. Um, they like the fact that we do what we say on the box. Uh, they like the fact that they can come and have a look and see what we do and check that, yes, it is goat and it's not mutton, which is a big problem in our industry. Um, and they like the integrity. And it's fun, you know. And wh where do these goats come from? Do you actually breed them yourself on this farm or wh where do they arrive? We started off breeding them on, on the farm and we found out rapidly that the business was growing to a stage where we couldn't keep up. So we now work with groups of farmers from around the country who supply goat into us. Um, some of them will breed them specially for us. Some of them will, ha will have their surplus stock. Um, some of them will be quite big farms. Some of them will be little small holdings that we'll only deal with once a year. Um, and that's the fun bit, because you end up going around in the lorry, buying goats, doing a deal, sat around the kitchen table, learning about people's lives, being part of what they do, where they're up to. And that's quite a privilege, and that's a lot of fun. So the, it, it's, I suppose, a very different to perhaps you know, being in the dairy industry that you were in many, many decades ago where you started out, where you're perhaps a little bit distant from the end user or the consumer, isn't it, really? Yes. Um, and the fun is there's no limits. When we were milking cows, we were desperately constrained by land and desperately limited with milk quota. With this, the only limit is your imagination. Um, and it means that we can actually go out and develop a business um, and add value to what we're doing uh, and grow a business. And, and that was what was really, really frustrating with the dairy job, was that we couldn't grow a business, no matter how hard we tried. It just didn't seem to work. So we're now here in the cold store. So, uh, so Tim, what are we looking at with these two carcasses? Well, you, what you've got here is a kid goat and a lamb. So you um, butcher for other people as well, obviously. We butcher for other people as well, um, and other farm shops and, and other farms. Um, so there's your Paula Ratcliffe and there's your Mike Tyson. There's your lamb with your short, stocky legs and your goats with your long, thin legs. Your depth of, and your width of carcass with your lambs, compare that with the goat. Um, and, and look at the different shapes and frames of them. Um, goats, I mean, this is quite a lean carcass. The goats are like you and I, they put the fat on around the heart and liver and under the skin, whereas the lamb will put the fat on in the meat itself, which is why you can cook a lamb quite quickly, whereas with goat you have to cook it very, very slowly because it doesn't have that fat in it, so you've got to add, actually add the moisture to it or the wine or the fluids so that when you cook it, you cook it very slowly. So butcher it like lamb, but cook it like beef. So on site, they've also got a lovely cafe, and uh, obviously people can buy direct from the counter here. But, uh, but so, Tim, how, how do people normally buy from you in terms of both individuals um, and businesses? Most of what we do is sold over the internet. Um, we're in a very rural location here, and if we were to rely on passing trade, um, things wouldn't work. But the advantage of having the a website is that we've got customers from Aberdeen down to Cornwall up to London so we can stand there and we can sit we can sell products here all over the country um, and to all the all different businesses restaurants pubs communities um, and going on from that um, we'll dispatch it and send it with um, overnight courier fresh um, and our USP is that we send meat out fresh um, Lots of businesses that do what we do send it out frozen. Um, 
but what we try and do, and what we do do, is everything that goes out is butchered to everybody's individual specs. So if they order something, we can do it for them. Um, and then it'll go out, be dispatched that afternoon, and be with the customer the following morning. Presumably, um, people can buy direct from your website, so we'll put a, a link uh, in the biography of this video to your website. And, uh, yeah, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. As Tim explained there, he doesn't always find it easy to find suppliers for goats uh, that he can process. So if that's a diversification project that appeals to you, then maybe it's something to investigate. For me though, I did avail myself of some very nice goodies from the farm shop. So uh, got a nice pasty for my lunch. So I'm in Tarleton, Hesketh Bank, with Steve from Hunter Pack. Some of the classic trucks are in the building. And we're going to go and have a look at the carrot processing factory in a minute. But you told me some really interesting facts a minute ago about how long you've had relationships with supermarkets for. So yeah. what was that? So we've been supplying Tesco for about 48 years. We've been supplying uh, m for about 45 years. And we've been in operation for the last 80 years. So we're celebrating our 80th year this year. So we're going to have a look in a minute. But are you struggling for labour at the moment? Uh, labour is always a challenge, yeah. But we've got those other 8,000 visas now. So it should help slightly, I think. So that should be assistance. But at the moment, the root job, is it good or bad? Or Good, good. Starting new season on carrots last week. So starting new season on the next week. So it should be good. Well, good. Yeah, so we'll go and have a look at the factory. We're in, we're in the museum with the wagons and there's an organ in the background someone's playing with. So that's the funny noise because we're with the edu NFU education team because they're going to do a lesson from here live in September. This is the old collection of wagons <laughs> on the back. It's loads of them. Leyland, Seddon Atkinson. There's Josh from the education team. I'm not a wagon. Look at these. Was that an Albion? Another Atkinson. Bedford. Oh, there's more. They're all immaculately polished. Polished. Look how shiny that is. That's the siren out of the old Leyland factory for when there's an air raid. Let's give it a whirl. We're at Ivy's Liz. Liz. Got Jenny. We're going around the carrot factory. Just going to wash our hands. We're at the start of the carrot line now. The one that tipped the trailers, they flew them out with water. So it's more gentle, so they just wash them out the trailer. dug a few hours ago overnight brought from Norfolk because that's where they started digging at the moment now they're dropping it into the washes they've just been flumed out the trailers so they don't damage them the land in all that water now again so it doesn't damage them and into the washes they've had a good wash now this is a hydro cooler so you can't see but that's frost it's dropping cold water on them and reducing them down to five centigrade and it doubles the shelf life on them from sort of like two to three days to about six. Stops them going rubbery. And so this time of year, it takes about 12 minutes to come through the hydro cooler to cool them to the right temperature before they go off to be polished. 
brushes of dirt spray and water, polishing them so now they come out really shiny. And now they're graded by these rollers, so they've all got different sizes as they go along. So it drops the little ones and then it carries the big ones further over. They come out in different conveyors. And then they're manually checked as well for quality, graded by hand before going off to be packed. After they've been graded, they come up, they fall in them hoppers, the conveyor keeps going. It fills up the hoppers and then the computer decides what combination of each hopper makes the best pack size. If they're packing five kilos, it might say right, one kilo out of that, two out of that one, three out of that one, or maybe like all four are open up or five are open up to get it to the best size. It drops in, gets down a spout here, puts it in there, heat seals it, and then off it goes round then. Checked again and weighed. There it is, weighing them now as they come out a kilo. Packed into crates over the shelf. On tour with the dinner ladies. This is one of the cold stores, which is really a big fridge. So these are waiting to get loaded onto wagons. Refrigerated wagons to go to the shops. This is roller racking in the other fridge. So it's sort of slight slopes, they keep pushing pallets on and they go forwards and then every time you take one off they roll back it means you don't have to have as much space between them all. So you put one pallet on and it goes back then you put the next pallet on that one and that goes back and then the third one stays at the front. Clever that. This is a loading bay so the forklifts come out they can adjust that ramp to the height that they want and the wagon's on a lowered yard outside and it's driving and out. So this is where the wagon's back up to the ramps now. This one's the one that we just see loaded. And off it goes. Also this week, someone has broken the tractor cab challenge record. So it's Bradfield and Sh Shefford Young Farmers have broken it. So here's that. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, someone has actually broken the record. I think we were stuck at 18 for quite a while and they've smashed it now. That's probably all we've got time for this week. I have had 28 mil of rain in the last seven days and Wednesday was the wettest day we've had since the 20th of February. What have you had this week, Rainfall Ride? Wise. Anyway, thanks to everyone that took part in today's show. Thanks to everyone that's watched. Don't forget, if you've made it this far, click like. And if you've not subscribed, click subscribe. That'd be great. And I'll see you all next week. And if you've got any good videos, send them over. Thank you.